Jesus is the lion of the tribe from Judah. Amen. But the word of God says that the eagle is the king of the heavens. The king of the birds. And the Lord, in so many words, with the Lord likened us to eagles. So my text this morning is from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. All right, I just want to stop at that for a moment. But you may ask yourself, why wait on the Lord? Why wait on the Lord? Uh, this message is for the kids as well. Your, your icing comes towards the end, especially for you. Now in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 23, verses 24, in verse 23, God says, Am I a God near at hand? Says the Lord. I'm not a God afar off. It's a God. God is saying he's near. He's not far from us. Amen. Can anyone hide himself in secret places? No. So I shall not see him? No. Says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth? Yes. And the references are there for you. Proverbs 15, 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Now, as eagles seemingly wait on the Lord, how much more should we who were created in the image of God wait on Him? Mm. Now, the Natural Geographic tells us that there are 68 species of, of eagles. Mm. And eagles can soar between 10,000 and 30,000 feet over 100 miles an hour. Wow and can fly for example for 87.52 minutes without flapping as pigeons do angels just glide they don't flap eagles thank you ambassador and god wants us god says that we should mount up with wings like eagles so we don't want to praise him we want to Wings, our wings are our arms, our hands, but not as long as the eagles, but God wants us to praise him. As we praise him, we raise our hands and praise him, so we, we go into greater height and greater depth of him. Now in this picture you see a rabbit, a, 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 an eagle there, looking, looking, is waiting to move, and we have to wait on God. We have to wait yeah. until God says, move. Amen. God says, go. An eagle can spot a rabbit two miles away. Wow. Two miles away. And the eagle's eyesight is five times our eyesight. Wow. So you can imagine it's stronger than humans. How stronger? But as the eagle is waiting to make its move, so we have to wait on God before we make our move. We have this free will. Birds have their free will. But the eagle is a special bird who just is not really nilly. He just doesn't do as it likes. And it doesn't fly with other birds. It flies with eagles. Eagles fly with eagles. <laughs> so if we are flying with other birds, there have to be birds uh, in the church. Birds in Christ. Obviously they will fly with other eagles, but not with other birds. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. The next slide. <laughs> But why wait on the Lord? I asked you that already, but I'm asking you that again. Amen. Doesn't his omnipresence say so? He's everywhere. Yeah. So why do we have to wait on him? He's everywhere. But yet God commands us to wait on him. So waiting on God means like what we what we did this morning, even as Pastor Shirley and the others were ministering, that is waiting on God too. You know, I expected to have been up here since this after eleven o'clock. But it is waiting on God for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Not doing things just by clock, by the book, but as God wants us to do. Does that he, God promise that when we wait on Him, he will, he will renew our strength. Renew our strength. And that's what eagles do. Eagles just, they wait. They don't just fly willy willy, willy nilly. They wait and then they take off and they go 30,000 feet into the air. Just, just gliding, 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 gliding. Yes, we, we don't have wings. But there are times as Christians where we feel high, on a high. I'm sure you felt high this morning. You felt good. 
not only in the worship, but in, her, in the ministry that you receive, the prayers that you receive, but that highness that we felt, that joy that we're feeling here now. God wants us to take it with us in circumstances. Eagles have problems too. An eagle can swoop down five feet under the sea, you see, as the sea in the, the, the fish in the sea, and take the fish up and lift, and lift a deer with his talons, with his claws. So we are not eagles, but God is saying that if we are created in his image, how much more, how much more, how much more are we more capable, more able than the eagles? But we have to understand again this morning who we are in God and rise in him. But we have to wait on the Lord to have our strength renewed. The word of God says that we were born to fly, to soar like an eagle and to reach greater heights for God's glory. Not literally flying because we don't have wings. But believe in it, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Who made the airplanes that fly? Who made the skyscrapers? Who made the, the top, top towers, towers or whatever? Who made man, mad, man is so brilliant in how he is designed. And if he's brilliant to design things, how much more if we continue to take guidance from the designer in our lives, how much more we can overcome all circumstances. Now with a broken and contrite heart, approaching God in repentance. Often we go to God and we want to tell God about our situation, cry out, tell God, tell God, tell God, tell God. And as if we want to cover up with God too. But God says when we come to him, yeah. the first thing before we start asking and complaining is come and worship. Lord, help me to worship you. Lord, help me to reach out to you. It's sacrifice of prayers. Because the word of God says that we have to offer to him that sacrifice of prayers. Of, and I'm not a singer, so when I go, I don't sing like how you all can. But what do I do? I invite the singers. I turn on the music and I listen to it. And I worship with that because that lifts me up. Open the door of your heart for Jesus to enter. You know very often you hear that verse, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And we use it in leading others to the Lord, in winning souls. But it doesn't only deal with salvation in the open air or inviting people to receive Christ. But opening your heart means every day. Being willing to worship. You know, last Sunday, out of, out of um, it took courage to do that, to leave my seat, and I went up to a young man. I thought that that's what God wanted me to do, and I said to him, can you worship with me? Can you dance with me? And he said, my feet hurt him. <laughs> but maybe the old lady frightened him, maybe he thought, she don't like this, she can move. You know, the, the young girl come tell me dance with her, she's crazy. So he probably was being nice to me. But sometimes we have to take the plunge, sometimes it takes courage and you might feel well, you know God is telling me to go and do that. But sometimes we have to be willing to obey because we want to receive God's blessings. We want to, to walk in his way. I don't understand this proper, so I want to see that to talk. And this is telling me how, how much time I have. All right, no. So I'm inviting your church today, as the eagle gets his strength from God, as the eagle soars above, he goes. So we have to spend time with God, not just on Sunday mornings, but every day at the beginning of the day. You know, I know we work is calling and sometimes we get up late, so it's a sacrifice. But, but, you know, we get blessed and we get to hear from God, guidance from Him. So we spend time with God praying for others. Our strength is renewed like the eagles, as the word of God tells us. Let's go on. Now, what does God expect of us after waiting? We're not waiting on God because we want to receive what he has to give us. But we want his guidance to guide our lives in our finances, in our relationships, 
at work, with our children, our grandchildren in the neighborhood. We want him to guide us so that we can experience what the early church experienced, that fellowship with him, what we can have a purpose in our lives. We don't have to be preachers. We don't have to be ministers. We don't have to have any special office. But when we come here, just our presence, our presence of worship. I remember some weeks ago, a young lady was worshiping. And that blessed me so much. She came in. I don't know if that was a sacrifice of prayers, but the young ones sometimes, because we were born with the music in us. We were born with the rhythm. And if you don't dance in here, you do it somewhere else. We can't get away from it. You dance and you move. But if you're worshiping, you're dancing to whatever you dance to, I'm talking to the church, the young people as well, that has to come out. But God wants us to worship him with music, to sing and praise him. And then we get victories over our lives. You now eagles love storms. This is the weather season now. You're preparing for it. See the government cleaning the dishes, the trenches, they're preparing for the weather. Because you know what happens during the we're in this season, we have a hurricane, we have a storm. Do you love storms and hurricanes? Yeah. Do you love rainy weather, but it's really raining hard all night, raining? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you know, because you don't have to go to work the next day? You yeah. <laughs> don't have to go to work. But children often get afraid of, of heavy rain, especially when it's on the roof, especially if the house is weak, it's leaking. But eagles love storms. Oh, yeah, thunder and lightning, yes, they get scared and they scream. All right. <laughs> All right, so I, I saw this about the scene, I don't like it either. But you see, when a storm comes, eagles fly into the storm. It lifts them higher and higher and pushes them higher and higher. And they're gliding and they're going and they're feeling on top of the world. Higher. Much higher than an airplane, about 30,000 feet into the air. And their speed, and they are going 10,000 to 30,000 feet, over 100 miles an hour. Okay? I said that already. So, what is happening is that we face storms in life too, sometimes every day. And when we get storms, I'm not going to church today. I haven't been to church for a while. I'm not going because life is too hard. The Christian life is too hard. If you weren't here last week, where were you not here? If you weren't here the week before, why weren't you here? If you're not going to be here next Sunday, why? So we have to, you know, we have to ask God, God, what would you have me to do today? And when, it, when it's rough, you feel like you're in bed all day and do nothing, but at the same time, the problems are still there, the situation is still there. But we learn from the eagle. The eagle pushes through the storms, or overcomes the storms. And when we have rough times, it should draw us closer to God. God, I need you. I can't handle this or I can't handle that. So not to get depressed and not read the word and give up and feel that people don't care. That's the time when the storms of life that we have to really press into God and go hard after God because he loves us. Isaiah 40 continues in verse 29. It says, he gives power to the weak. God has promises you power if you're feeling temptation. Yeah. Temptation, and I would not give examples of temptations in what area, but temptation. And those who have no might increase in strength when they feel like, this is too hard. I can't do this anymore. Whatever it is, whatever we say. All the negatives, all the pain. But we have to take these things to God. Verse 30 says, even the youth shall faint and be weary. Yes, young people get tired. Especially if you're athletes too and, and you're running and you get tired. You might win the race, you might lose the race. All right, you're saying that you get tired? All right. But we have to put our trust in God in every situation in life. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. It comes from waiting on God. We have to wait on God. The, um, as a matter of fact, you, you can study eagles. It's good to go home and study. I'm just giving you a brief outlook. 
But I'm saying to you that God compares us. Even God spoke about when he bore the Israelites, when they were coming out of Egypt, he said, I bore you on eagles' wings. God talks about how he carried us, how rough it was, and how he parted the, part the Red Sea, and he carried his people. And I want you to understand this afternoon that God loves you, and, you're, and God knows your situation, whatever it is, but we have to wait on him. We have to believe his promises. We have to believe that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And there's a video I want to share with you. Because this video encourages us to confess our faith to others. You know, that's where we get strengthened. Somebody asks you, are you a Christian? Um, I, go, I go to church. Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Well, my grandmother is a Christian. My mother is a Christian. Or, well, I want to be. But when last did you tell someone about Jesus? Because when you love someone, you talk about that person. When last did you tell somebody about your girlfriend or your boyfriend? About your car? About your job? About your new phone that you have? What are the things that excite you that you talk about every day? Whether be, whether because they excite you or talk about the problems. You talk about something every day. So we have to ask ourselves, what are the things that we talk about every day? What are the things that we watch every day? Every day. What are the things that we do every day? What excites us? Excites us? But the Word of God says that we are called upon to share Him. Not because we won't be saved if we don't share Him. But when we share Christ, we make this a better world. We help others who don't know Christ. If you really know him and what you have, you share so that others too can receive what you have. But if you're not talking about Christ, you're probably ashamed of him, or you're not reading the word of God, or you're not sure what you believe. But in the beginning, in the beginning, you talk about him. So where are we now in sharing our faith with Christ? Do we read the Bible? Do we, do we, do we remember, memorize, 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 memorize scriptures? A time will come when you can't read the Bible, even now. We are free to read the Bible, but do you open the Bible in your home? Do you read it? It might be your cell phone, for convenience sake. But having it in your cell phone only is not studying it. That, is, that, that, that helps. It should help. But we need to study the Word of God. We don't need to be a preacher or pastor or Bible student to study the Word of God. So listen to these children studying the Word of God and they should encourage you. Listen to their body language. Listen to their actions. Listen to the message, children. And ask yourself, can you do that? Would you want to do that? Would you want to have a testimony like these children? I don't understand. Come, let's shoot. You are telling me another one.
I want to know more how Jesus is coming. John chapter 14 verse 3 and the Bible says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again. And I will take you to myself. Jesus is saying that he circumstances but we cannot do it in our own strength we have to do it with his strength in his strength because the word promises I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me we had a lot of ministry this morning and I'm saying to all of us you know what your week is going to be like your work week your school week your unemployment week your Meet miserable with miserable neighbors, whatever you have to go through. But I'm, I'm encouraging you to take everything to the Lord. Give everything to Him and trust Him. Because the Word of God has promised that your eyes haven't seen yet, and your ears haven't heard yet, and your heart hasn't even imagined what God has in store for you. But you have to trust Him. You have to trust Him with, with your life, and you will find victory and enjoyment in your Christian life. But you have to be willing to put off what is not pleasing to God. It might be very, very hard. It might be something that you have been practicing for the last 10, 15, 20 years. I don't know. I don't. The wonderful thing about it is that I don't know anything about you. But God says the hairs on your head are, not, are numbered. Well, not, not this here. But God knows everything about you. And he has plans for you and he wants you to trust him so i encourage you church today all of you to trust god and commit your life your life in him because it says remember thy creator now in the days of thy youth because the evil days are here and the evil days are coming and if you don't know no it is free press into him press into him and commit your life to him it's going to become harder because the word of god says that sin is sweet but this pleasure in season, in sin for a season. So God bless you this morning, church, and continue to reach out to, to God because He has plans for you.